Hello everyone, welcome back to Game Dev Night. This is episode 7 of our platform series in Godot, and today we're going to do some simple enemies. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is fix a little <laughs> issue from the last episode that I didn't address. Sorry about that, and that is we need to actually flip the hit area for the meleeing, uh, because right now, player can't actually hit on the left side because that does not flip. Now for that, we're just going to simply drag in that like so, .scale.x, and we're just doing the exact same thing we're doing for the sprite. And we'll just do abs, paste it in like so, oh, sorry about that, times negative one. Uh, we'll just take this again and paste it over here and cool. That's out of the way, sorry about that. That'll just make it so a player can actually hit left. And now let's get into the enemy. Now what I've done in here is I've made a little enemy. It's just a character body 2D. He has a sprite as the child, a collision shape, hitbox, which I still have connected, sorry about that. Oh, and a collision shape 2D, and an animation player, and yeah. So you can see I have some enemies spread around on the level. Enemy over here, enemy over here. I just dragged them in simply. Cool. And now let's make these enemies work. And of course, I just have a little run animation that just plays on loop. Cool. Now let's actually do the logic for the enemy. We're going to make a new script on the enemy. We're going to go up, scripts, and we're going to make a new folder, enemies, and save a two for the capital, just because why not. And yeah, here we go. So we need to change a lot in here. So we'll get rid of all of this, and we'll do velocity dot x equals speed, which right now speed is uppercase, so that's going to give an error. Just ignore it. And we're going to make speed lowercase, also make it a variable, and also make a negative 60. I'll get into y in a second, and we'll delete all of that like so. And we need a variable facing right, which is a boolean, which is false. And yeah, now we can get into how this actually works. So our sprite faces left by default. If your sprites all look right, then this should just be 60, and this should be true. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to know, sorry. So that's just me declaring that he's facing left. That's why it's negative and that's why it's false. Anyway, let's move on. So we need a function to actually flip the enemy when he gets to an edge of a platform. Because right now an enemy will just run and fall, right? Let's hit play and I'll show you. So the enemy's just gonna run and he's just gonna fall. And that's wrong. We need the enemies to actually bounce when they get to the edge of the platform. So function flip. And then here, we're going to do facing right equals, oh, sorry about that, exclamation mark facing right. So that is just, if facing right is true, it'll be false. If it's false, it'll be true. That's all that is, right? Just quickly switches it out. And we want to do scale dot x equals abs, scale dot x times negative one. So again, just the same stuff we're doing on a player. We're just flipping it. And if facing right, then speed equals abs speed, so that'll make it positive. So if speed was negative, this will just make it positive again. Else speed equals, and we're doing the opposite here. Speed times negative one. Cool. So all that is is if he's facing right after we flip, then I spelled that wrong. Then he needs to flip the speed as well, and yeah. There's nothing too bad about that. That's all that is. And now we need a way to actually detect the ground, right? We need to know if he's at an edge of a platform. How can we do that? We can use a Sprite 2D. Now I'm going to move mine over here. You don't have to. It's just for the sake of how it looks. And then the inspector, I'm going to make it 15 long in the x-axis. So this is just the laser. That's how far the laser can detect for ground. And from where it detects, we're just going to make that a little bit outside the player. So I like my enemies detecting quite close to an edge. I don't like them bouncing from an edge when they're like that close. But wherever you put this is how far the enemy will look for an edge, right? Cool. And yeah, that's how done. So now we need to use this. So I'm gonna just write out the code for it for anything. So F exclamation mark raycast 2D dot is colliding and is on floor, then flip. What is this right here? That is, if this laser is hitting something, that is returning true. That's all that is. So this is just a Boolean check that checks for if it's touching anything. And you're just checking for if it's negative. So if it's not touching anything, if it's false, then flip. But we only want to do that if the enemy is on the floor. We don't want the enemy to just flip infinitely when he's in the air. Right? Because that would just look a little bit funky. But there you go. 
that's it done. If I hit play now, it should just work. And yeah, as you can see, the enemies bounce appropriately. It all works perfectly, if I do say so myself. But I'm going to make my animation actually play. So function ready. And we're dragging the animation player. Dot play. And we'll do run. Cool. So you just made some simple enemies that can run around now. And they look quite magnificent. But now we need to actually kill these enemies, and we need to make the enemies kill me. Now, simplest way we can do that for the enemy real quick is making him kill me. Is go into his node over here, and click on the hitbox. Area entered, connect to the enemy. We're doing the exact same thing we did for the spikes. And by exact same, I mean the exact same. We'll go into spikes, take this like so, copy, paste. And if you haven't been following along the series and you just want something that can kill an object it touches, you just do Q3 like so. But if you have been following along, it's just die. Cool. Now, let's go into 2D and we're going to see an issue. What's the issue? Oh, oh, I'm so bad. Uh, Alright, back up. He's not killing me too easy. It's like very finicky. we got to like really touch each other and like really figure it out. The reason for that is the collision shapes are bigger than our actual detection shapes, like on a player. This is the player's actual hitbox for him touching things, right? So he's he's really big. But we need the the shape inside that detects for like spikes and stuff like that. We need it to be able to hit the enemy. How do we do that? We put the player on layer 2 and we put the enemy on layer 2. Right, so click on your enemy, go into collision, click layer 2, same for the player. Sorry about that, I shift S. So, what does this do? This just means it is looking for, it can only look for layer twos. Uh, so things that mask is number one. Uh, so if your player is on layer two, he will look for things on layer two, but if something's on layer one, he won't even see it. Same with the enemy. So the enemy is looking for layer two, but he's on layer one, so he doesn't, you know, I hope you could see, I'm very bad at explaining this. It's such a dilemma to explain these things, but essentially just, if something's mask is not on number two, this enemy will not be able to collide with it. Same with the player. So they're both just on number two, so they can't collide with each other. That's all there is. So now if we run into these enemy, we could run through them. Well, he'll just kill us, but yeah, now it actually works. So there you go. You've just made some simple enemies that you can touch and they can kill you. Uh, but you can't kill them yet. But if this is all you want for your platformer, there you go. But now we're going to kill these bad boys. So I'm going to make an actual function on my enemy. And we'll just go function die. Like so, same as the player. And for now, we'll just say Q3. Why not? But we're going to change it in a sec. But this is just for the sake of the tutorial. So Q3 like so. And now on a player, in this melee function we made in the last episode, we're essentially going to make the same thing we did. So for overlapping, oh, sorry, area and overlapping object. Eh, I spelled that wrong. Overlapping objects. Like so. If overlapping objects, no. If area dot get parent dot is need to put a bracket. Get parent dot is n oh group enemies. Then area dot get parent like so. Space back dot die. Now this isn't gonna work. Because we have one little issue. We haven't declared what this group is. Now, what is a group, right? I'm not going to get into what a group is specifically, but I'll show you how to add something to a group. So we're clicking our saber too. If we go into node, and next to signals, you'll see groups. And let's make a new group called enemies, the one we just made in code. And now if we click on manage groups, you'll see we have the group enemies. And what is in this group? Well, the saber tooth is in this group. And that's that essentially. So this saber tooth is in the group enemies. Right, so what are we checking for in the player? We're checking for if the group is in enemies. And if it isn't enemies, we're telling it to die, which on our saber tooth just cues free. You just made enemies and go, and you're done. That's it. So now we can kill them, and I died at the same time because I touched them because I'm very bad. Uh, but we can run around, we can kill these guys. And they move a little bit fast, I might turn, turn them down a little bit, but yeah. So you have just made some simple enemies and get up. Oh, I'm so bad. There we go. Uh, but yeah.
hope you guys liked it. That was it, essentially. Uh, I'm going to change one thing on my enemies, and that is I'm going to make them actually play an animation, which will be the uh, play die. And I'm also going to set the speed to zero. And I'm also going to make a variable uh, dead. It's false. And I'll do dead equals true. And in here, I'm going to check also for if dead is not true. So if the enemy is alive, he can still touch play and stuff. This is just so that the enemy doesn't go into the dying animation and he can still hurt the player, because that's just annoying. And on my enemy, for his dying animation, you'll see I have a different track over here, which calls a function. So I just hit add track and call method. I double click Sabertooth, like so. Right, and I already I already have done it, but now in here I can anywhere click insert key and I could call any function on the saber tooth, but I can also just call Q3. So I'm just destroying things with my animation. And right, let me put this back on run, and let me show you. So now I can actually kill these enemies, and it just works very nicely. Cool. And I hope you guys enjoyed. So we're done fully. And yeah. If there's anything I have missed, any functionality for these enemies you would like, let me know in the comments. We will do more enemies in future, but for now, this is the Sabertooth enemy. Very nice. And as always, I hope you guys have a nice day. And the Discord is in the link below if you guys want to join. And thank you guys for the support. We just hit 100 subs almost two days ago now, and I made a little video for it. And yeah, just thank you guys so much. I've really appreciated all the help. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.